Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, as you all know by now, every day we tackle how technology is transforming our world, our lives, and indeed entire industry. And sometimes, yes, sometimes we get a little glimpse into our immediate future. And we have covered the future of work a lot on this podcast recently. But today, I wanted to take that to an entirely different level and highlight how technology is changing the future of work today and right across multiple industries too. And that's because I've got the guys from Tailspin on the show, and I'm genuinely really excited about this one, because Tailspin creates transformative virtual, augmented, and mixed reality business solutions. And the company leverages its proprietary XR technology platform to create a virtual reality learning and training applications and can support workforces with augmented reality field tools and even improve workforce intelligence with mixed reality. I mean, how cool is that? And they've got offices in LA and over here in Europe, and they're changing the way organizations and employees around the world experience work. And they do all that by combining expertise in immersive technology development, learning design and user experience, and not to mention AI to enable enterprises to build a more collaborative environment. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Los Angeles so we can speak with the CEO of Tailspin, Kyle Jackson. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Kyle. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me, Neil. Um, So my name is Kyle Jackson. I'm the CEO of a a virtual and augmented and mixed reality company called Tailspin. Um, We're based in Los Angeles and uh, and the Netherlands. And uh, since 2015, we've been building um, enterprise-focused solutions looking at how um, the spatial computing field can um, uh, change the future of work. Fantastic. Well, I love what you're doing. I think it's incredibly exciting. And upon reading about you, I quickly learned that your solutions pair entertainment industry-grade design and graphics with enterprise software to bring virtual reality into the workplace, which is incredibly cool on its own. But that's going to be an incredibly exciting line for many people listening too. So can I ask you possibly paint a picture of what you're building here and how you're actually helping businesses and solving real problems with this tech? Yeah, and I think it's also interesting to to talk a little bit about that background because it's um, you know the, everything that we see happening is really a collision of worlds that maybe hadn't touched before, and um, and obviously gaming and media and entertainment and and enterprise software kind of follow that trend. So when we were working in in gaming and uh, and media entertainment, we were dealing with you know bleeding edge sensor technology on on the media and entertainment side, capturing and basically uh, merging physical and, and virtual worlds. And on the gaming side, obviously, you're, you're using real-time engines to, to build immersive and very um, interactive uh, and always changing uh, environments. And so those technologies really come together here when we talk about you know, spatial computing. And, um, and when you start to look at applying that towards the enterprise world, um, what we get excited about is that uh, everyone at the end of the day is a consumer. And we're all become accustomed to a certain level of quality um, because of, of just, just how good our applications and our different experiences that we have are, are now. Um, and what we saw was uh, that this is a, it wasn't necessarily true in the enterprise world. And so uh, by pairing kind of our you know, our background and, 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 and uh, you know, technology brains, we were able to basically present kind of some unique solutions to the enterprise space um, that I think other people, um, you know, had, uh, had attempted, but maybe not come from the same backgrounds and therefore the quality and, and some of the other things are just different in the way that solution looks. So, um, the solutions started out really focused on answering business questions. So we were, so we were originally for the first two years of the company, we were going and we were talking about what these mediums could be and, um, and asking questions around what were your, the, you know, what was, uh, the enterprise customer's biggest problem. And really, it was all around you know any any area, and and what we consistently got centered to was a lot of what's now in the middle of this future of work um, debate, which was 
uh, upskilling, cross-skilling, and and really the ability to engage the younger generations in in the workforce. So we ended up building um, a number of solutions early on. Some were data visualization, some were uh, training applications, um, and others were just purely um, you know communication or marketing uh, engagements. Uh, but that led us to really a um, a central theme, which was around accelerating knowledge transfer. Um, and, and how do we look at these mediums as a, as a means to do that? Um, and we can totally unpack why, 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 that's, why that is the central problem. But uh, what it actually ended up looking like was, um, you, know, you, you know, if it was a virtual reality um, application, you know, um, you, you could step into a world playing the role, the central role of, a, um, of whatever that job is. And in a simulated environment, get the the opportunity to you know solve a hundred cases before day one on the job, um, and that gave people a, a, an incredible level of confidence um, when they stepped out of of their onboarding. It also um, engaged them in the early days of the job, you know, with a new company in a totally unique way, and people got very excited about what that what that meant for for um, how the company was viewing their own personal development or, or career you know development. And then it it, um, it also came with all the benefits of just uh, being exponentially more effective. So it, it started to shape the conversations, um, and, and eventually we landed on this this macro problem of accelerating knowledge transfer across the entire workforce lifecycle. So many great points in there, and so right in what you're saying about the the tech that surrounds our lifestyle now. I mean, a lot of people listening are going to be coming home from work, controlling their heating, their entertainment, and everything from their just using their voice. And then they go into the office the next day, and sometimes it feels like stepping back in time ten years, doesn't it? Yeah, and that was that was a huge part of um, uh, of what where we were coming from. I mean, when I grew up. Um, I literally got a job so I could get access to 3D software um, and I could get access to a good computer because that was obviously the, the place where, where the budgets were and, and you could get access to those things. It was too expensive, obviously, to have in, in, your, in your home. That equation totally flipped and, uh, and people's uh, work experience became kind of lagging behind their home experience. And, and those expectations now are, are, are there in full force in the younger generations. And it's causing a lot of, of um, you know, disruption and turmoil in employment because it's honestly just not that inspiring. I mean, it was really inspiring for me as a kid to go in and be able to have access to a render farm and try something I never could have imagined I could even figure out how to do. Um, that was amazing and, uh, you know, just a tremendous amount of fun. Um, and obviously the, the inverse of that experience is, is the inverse. And so we see, you know, increased churn and we see all sorts of, of, of problems that, that come out of that. And, and we think that it probably needs a change in the medium, you know, so meaning changing to a completely new, like if you try to change people's impressions of mobile or desktop software or other types of en- ways we engage in the work uh, today, you've got a pretty big barrier to overcome because a lot of those uh, opinions are fairly ingrained now. Um, but when you start with a completely new medium, you have a fresh slate and people don't have comps and they don't have expectations and you wow them, that's something you can build from. And because of these problems that we're talking about, it seems that everybody's talking about the future of work now as we take those expectations from our lifestyle and take them into the office and demand something more. So I'm curious, what do you think the future of work will look like? Well, it's interesting. So so I think... Um, we're just talking about one one facet, right? So if you if you dive into this this debate around the future of work, um, the stuff that gets a lot of the coverage is obviously around algorithms, AI, robotics, and automation, and how that's going to kind of eat into the productivity cycles of of our work and how we you know how we basically benefit the companies and in, in the overall you know economic situation um, <laughs> in which we you know which we play a part. Um, the part we just all we talked about is the complete other side, which is actually the the just massively changing expectations of what that experience uh, should and look like and feel like. And so you have these two massive forces, you know, just applying a lot of pressure to this conversation right now. And and so when we think about that, um, and and, we, and this is this is really the central problem that we've been working on since before we started the company. Um, I basically started to get some exposure to this. So some of this stuff looking at uh, seed stage AI investments between 2012 and 2015. 
And I just saw what was what was was coming at that. You know, if if even five percent of the companies that we looked at were were right, you know, you could you could kind of do the math as to what it was going to mean on the on the automation and AI side. And so, so I got started to get to work on this problem, and then discovered the second problem, which was this this, this the younger values and, and and other things that were were being were now being mixed into it. So we. Um, we think that there's actually an interesting and, and, and very compelling solution, actually. Um, basically, it, it starts with aligning people to the work that they, um, that they are built for. Um, and, and that's a, it's a weird concept because obviously we're, we're, we kind of work in a system today that's, that's, that's not built that way. Uh, we, we pass through gates and then those gates unlock opportunities. Um, uh, for us, and sometimes those are aligned with things that we actually enjoy doing, and sometimes they're not. Um, and and the the future of work we're trying to build is is to actually uh, put humans where humans are are good, um, and or passionate, because obviously the more passionate we are about what we do, the, you know, the, the 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 more likely it is we're gonna we're gonna you know overperform above and beyond what an algorithm could do, or 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 whatever the alternative might be, and so. We think the first thing is actually focusing on figuring out how to better align people um, with opportunities, um, and obviously virtual, augmented, and you know re virtual reality, augmented reality, and, and and spatial computing could could play a really interesting role in that. Um, you know, there's there's the ability to kind of preview the work that you might want to do um, before you do it. Uh, that's obviously one obvious way. Um, we also have uh, a lot of interesting new ways to measure and assess um, ourselves um, through these mediums, uh, much, much better than, than we've had in anything we, that's come before. And so um, I, we could imagine, a, you know, a, a, a future in which, uh, you know, as you're going through um, uh, career planning and, and things like that, you're actually looking at, you're looking at your opportunities and options through a completely different lens um, altogether. And so, we look at the the core tenets of the future of work, at least from what we're trying to do, being that we can, uh, you know, that we can really accelerate the delivery of knowledge um, to the individual. So we can we can really help to make them feel empowered, regardless of how long they've been in that job. Um, that's a fundamentally different thing, right? I mean, usually it's through gates of apprenticeship and and, and lots of experience that you get to to proficiency. And here um, we can build that experience virtually um, and we can support that experience um, in the field through mixed reality eventually to where you you really do feel empowered to uh, to make decisions that you may have never ever made before um, and that really fundamentally starts to change change work but uh, we think that the first um, you know big 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 factors is a better alignment of of the things we love to do or the or, or of, of our uh, of our purpose and, and those types of opportunities and just to help people listening visualize the kind of work that you're doing here, can I ask if you have any examples of how overlapping these virtual worlds and real-time information can actually benefit businesses? Yeah, absolutely. We so you know we we started working really deeply in the insurance um, industry, um, which was actually quite quite surprising to us um, as well uh, when we when we when we saw the traction there. But it started to make a lot of sense as we started to unpack it and 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 get deeper in. Um, so you, so we've all, you know, we all obviously have homes and, 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 have, you know, hopefully never had a problem with them, but imagine that you have, and you have, and, and that you've had to deal with, you know, it, working with your insurance company to figure out how to solve that problem. You know, in that, in that line of work, you obviously usually have a claims adjuster, you have the, your agent, you have your broker, you have, you have multiple people from the insurance company that help, that our job is to help, uh, resolve that situation. Um, but ultimately, they're all collaborating around a physical space, which is your home that now has, you know, walls torn apart and needs to be fixed. And maybe you're staying in a hotel. <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so if, in that role, of that claims adjuster, as an example, right, um, combining the virtual and real time information, um, you know, in the field of view and how that could benefit. It really it really can suck a huge amount of the the coordination uh, time and delay and information, um, missing information, you know, out of the equation. So imagine that, that, um, that, uh, Neil is your house, you know, and I, and I, and I come to your home and I'm the claims adjuster. And, uh, on my first visit, I'm going to basically document the situation and I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that 
there in your home spatially. But it's it's a digital layer that I'm creating that basically is going to be anchored uh, and and persist in that environment. Um, and when I walk away from that situation, um, then the, the, you know one of my vendors is going to come in the next day, and is are going to have all of the information that they need. Um, you know, from from my initial assessment to help you know accelerate the situation. So now they've they've uh, we've taken a huge amount of coordination out of that out of that uh, that puzzle. Um, now imagine that some that vendor basically says, okay, I, I know what the work is, and and now they're going to send in somebody to actually perform it. Maybe that person's a little bit novice and doesn't have a hundred percent confidence in in whatever it is they're solving. We can actually support that through through um, through real time information and animation in their field of view to help them basically uh, augment their own abilities um, and and operate with confidence. So now this this really complex thing that usually took a lot of apprenticeship and a lot of coordination um, and also puts you at a lot of stress over the whole time that this is going on becomes a much a much more um, tangible and 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 kind of um, a simple operation really and so that's a that's a it, in that one example we 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 basically highlighted kind of the ability of of collaboration and 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 coordination as well as like real-time knowledge de- delivery but it, when you put it in that context it kind of just makes it, it i don't know to me it makes it seem very simple and uh and very plausible and and, and we've we've built those kinds of things so so it's not a it's not a science fiction type of thing. It's 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 actually very real. Yeah, and I'm hearing more and more about insure tech solutions at the moment. Technology really does seem to be transforming the whole of the insurance sector. But it, you operate in just about every industry. And I also read that you picked up an award as a digital innovator, transforming benefits in HR too. So do you have any examples of how you're doing just that to help listeners actually see the benefits of VR, especially in a HR environment? Well, it's interesting. So we ended up being dragged into HR from insurance. So, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I always loved um, when the first time I got told told this, it, it really resonated. But basically, insurance companies meet their clients on their worst day of their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Oftentimes, this is the first time they've ever met. Um, so there's a lot of people problems in insurance, right? And and being good at communication and 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 empathy and these 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 core tenants are actually not just an internal company you know issue. Obviously, they're very much a, a service delivery issue. And so, when we were working on um, building simulations for 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 these jobs um, to where people could you know train in a safe environment, obviously there was originally there was no there was no humans in there because it was really about process. And we kept getting pushed on. Well, basically, our business is really a human business, and so. Uh, we started experimenting on how we would actually build, you know, compelling um, characters, virtual virtual humans into the into these simulations. And as soon as we ha- had a little bit of an example of that, and um, we started to show, uh, you know, the, the enterprise world, um, everybody came into the same thing. Oh my gosh, we could use this for soft skills. We need this so bad for leadership. We need this so bad for communication. And and what what it was, I mean, what the experience was was that you were able to sit in in VR across from a virtual human and actually uh, essentially get batting practice at difficult conversations. Um, and it was believable. That was the thing. It wasn't, you, you weren't op- operating uh, against a, uh, you know, a South Park cartoon. Um, you were, you were operating against something that, that, that the emotion transmitted to you. And that's when people went, wow, this is something unique. We had a lot of people when we started showing the initial demo that couldn't make it through the demo because the character would get upset and it would make them upset and they say, okay, okay, I'm done. You know? <laughs> um, so that, and that was one of our bars, you know, basically we said, if this is actually going to do its job, um, you know, the job that it's being hired to do <laughs> is, <laughs> it, is teach people to be mo- more uh, emotionally intelligent, uh, you know, beings and, and, and better communicators. So it can't be a trivial practice round. And so we really focused on a lot of, uh, of the nuance of emotional realism and, and things like that. And, 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 and that's where a lot of our, our prior background really came in and helped us to excel um, from, from our entertainment and gaming backgrounds. You know, we were able to leverage a lot of what we had done there and trans, you know, and, 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 and basically, um, you know, inject that into this new solution. 
So it does seem quite a natural progression now going from insurance tech into HR tech. But you also recently announced a collaboration with We Are Farmers on a VR training program for leadership and communication skills. So can you tell me more about that, how you got involved with it and what, what that actually involves? Yeah, so it's just an extension of the same uh, virtual human platform. So yeah. so, so farmers really, just, uh, when we showed them the demo, they immediately wanted to point it in two directions, kind of as I was saying. They, they said, okay, this is great. We need now, we can use this to simulate um, and give our, our, our employees uh, the ability to practice, you know, difficult conversations with our clients and, and our vendors, these types of situations that they're going to run into every day. But at the same time, um, we really have a leadership uh, gap Meaning, and this is this is not them. This is this is the industry. Uh, we really want to um, provide. You know, if we're looking at the future of work and the most important skills um, that we need to basically make sure our our people are are really good at, um, a huge number of them fall into leadership and communication. And so they said we would love to look at at how we can use um, you know this pipeline. Um, you know, to get to to replace our old learning modalities, our old ways of doing that. Um, and so. You can imagine a situation in which you need to give um, performance feedback or you maybe need to give some coaching or you need to give um, actual, um, uh, uh, you know, there's obviously the, the, the good side and the bad side of being a leader. Right. And yeah. so you can think of every scenario there that it would just be helpful to have uh, practice. And so uh, we started building um, uh, some programs with them and with some other partners there for, for those purposes using the same the same platform. And one of the other key trends I keep reading about again and again is in this age of automation, artificial intelligence and machine learning, that actually it's soft skills like communication, listening and empathy that are now going to be needed more than ever in today's workforce. So can you tell me a bit, little bit more about how for enterprise organizations seeking training for those skills, it could actually be VR and AR that could be the answer to that? Yeah, yeah, and that, and that and that's and that's exactly the trend line that that we ended up kind of you know initially kind of hypothesizing about, and now and now here we are. Um, so so you know if you, if you can imagine that um, uh, over time, right? We you know we and we talk to people in, in call centers and customer service lines and in leadership. I mean, across all all stages of of a business uh, and, and, and its employees. And uh, ev- everywhere there, soft skills is, is a huge, um, consistent uh, uh, thread. Um, you know, businesses are looking at how they can use sensors and algorithms to help, you know, deal with coordination or data collection. So we're not we're not doing those two functions anymore. But now we're interpreting interpreting it and or just communicating it back to the customer. And so though that really becomes a, a, a huge communication burden. Um, and, and obviously it's where most of the business's risk is from a standpoint of delivering its, its service. So um, the idea of, of really, you know, becoming a world-class athlete at, at that um, is, is extremely attractive to companies as they think about this whole uh, equation of future of work. And so if you think of the old ways that people have to do that, you know, they, they take people into classrooms, they do role playing, that's the best case scenario. Uh, worst case scenario is you get um, a PowerPoint or some video and get thrown into the wild and then you you fail and you get judged for it. And here, you know, we have a, this whole new potential um, opportunity, which is it's just to use simulation and to use um, a platform like ours to to step into uh, that world before you're in harm's way or, or your clients in harm's way and practice and have literally a totally safe place to fail and and then take that back and have discussions with your management and and use that for coaching so it, it accomplishes a couple of things right it, it gives a it gives us an environment we've never had um which i think is really needed in this area from around soft skills um which is this kind of safe you know safe place to fail and in and, and place to do batting practice um, but it also it also gives managers and 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 leadership tools that they've never had either um, in terms of the feedback. And so between those two things, I think we're going to see a, a you know an, a, an exponential acceleration in, in this. Um, it, our issue is actually more of um, of demand and how do we point it at the the most broadly applicable uh, and useful situations. Because this is this is an area that needs so much work that it that it really is a a big mountain to climb. 
And when we're talking about digital human avatars delivering that virtual human touch to enterprises, do you think it's suited to some industries more than others, or do you think it will affect all of them? Because when you're talking about it's a people thing, it really seems to me that it could go across every industry. Yeah, it is, and it's internal and external, right? Um, And so I think there's a distinction about how you do it um, because there's definitely different technologies inside the VR and AR um, bucket that um, that you might choose to apply to one scenario versus another. Um, you know, some scenarios might be much much better um, through 360 video as an example, where our solution is 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 entirely virtual, character based, and it's it's driven essentially by by AI and conversational models. So when you get into some of the more you know touchy subjects, it might actually be better to observe that through video, kind of make a deduction from what you observed, where other scenarios, it's really just about that practice. It, it is broadly suited, and I think we are gonna see different different solutions, different uh, you know immersive or XR solutions being applied to, to, to the different use cases. But yeah, it, it's really not about um, industries when it comes to this, because at the end of the day, we are talking about you know, humans role in work <laughs> and our role as we as we look at that trend is going to be more and more on the soft skills uh, and communication and, and delivery of results than it is on the processing of those results. And so it's going to affect everywhere. And, and I think it's a huge opportunity for businesses to get out in front of it and, and really give their people the ability to gain the confidence they need. We hear we hear horror stories of, uh, of people churning out of situations in which you just go, yeah, they just weren't prepared for that. It's just it's just sad that the business set them up for that, um, and we think that that is something that can definitely be changed through this kind of technology. And before you came on the show today, I must admit I did a fair bit of research to learn more about the kind of work that you're doing, and I quickly learned that Tailspin has multiple Fortune 100 customers currently using your virtual human technology, and are going to be announced more later this year in 2019. Now I understand you're going to be locked down with various NDAs, and you can't reveal yeah. too much. But yeah. can you leave us with any kind of teasers about the kind of work that you're doing? Yeah, so there's a couple. So we're also, you know, so we're building stuff that's going to be broadly applicable and and something that can be adopted quickly and off the shelf. Because when we first showed this technology, companies immediately that that with the, the few companies that we got in front of with it first immediately said we need to point this at one of our biggest problems. And so we built some bespoke stuff that that really addresses those those big problems. And and th- those are the results that I think we're going to be able to share a lot more, in, you know, this fall. Um, you know, for example, we ran, we're running one, um, uh, one study with several thousand enterprise employees, um, around, uh, leadership and inclusion and, and understanding, um, uh, you know, what's an inclusive and, uh, uh, work environment look like and how can you identify that and how do you take those challenges head on when you see those problems? Um, so that's a really interesting and compelling study. You know, it also is going to look at the effectiveness of VR in that role. So that's something that, that will be coming out later this year. Um, obviously, the, the farmers program continues to expand. Um, we've been working in the telecom industry with 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 um, with a few customers there, and 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 they're seeing uh, pretty staggering results. And and those programs are expanding. So uh, we hope that the customers start to be more confident in in being able to talk publicly around their work, um, because some of them are you know they all have their different um, approach to that. Some love to be innovators and others love to, um, you know, pr- be 100 percent risk adverse and, and or uh, or protect the, you know, the, the communication lines out around this kind of stuff. So I, I think it's going to change. I think by the end of this year, it's going to be kind of a thing that, that everybody's going to be talking about how they use it um, because the, the data is going to be in and it's just going to it's going to be one of those things that I, it, it's almost going to be uh, become a question of of uh, or more of a requirement <laughs> because otherwise you're going to be viewed as not doing what you can to prepare your people well i suspect that a lot of people listening are going to be leaving this podcast and wanting to find out more information about you guys so could you possibly point them in the direction of your website if you've got any videos or a youtube channel or social channels or what is the best way of just reaching out and contacting your team if there's a business leader that's got questions that they'd like to throw your way to yeah, absolutely. So, so we're, our website's uh, uh, tailspin.company, and it's, it's T-A-L-E-S-P-I-N. Um, and um, uh, we're on, on, on Twitter and on, on LinkedIn at, at the same, tail, Tailspin Company. 
And then, um, yeah, obviously through the website, there's there's ways to get in touch with with your business teams and the press teams. So um, we're always here and, and on the ball. Fantastic. Well, what I've loved about today's conversation is, especially when I record this daily tech podcast and I write a lot of tech columns, etc. Is there's so much hype around technology, but and, and a lot of hype around the new solutions that surround that. But everything that you've talked about today is real world solutions and how you're making a difference with this technology right now. I mean, you mentioned just a handful of HR, insurance tech, and farming, etc. And what really stands out for me is that these transformative qualities actually go across multiple industries and it really highlights how you're building a new future of work but doing it today so a big thank you for taking the time for sharing that with me today thanks carl yeah thanks neil tailspin's thesis that it was built on is that automation is going to eat away at the process orientated jobs that have been traditionally done by humans i think we're all starting to accept the fact that those repetitive mundane tasks are going to be automated so as a result of that Excellent soft skills, including having tough conversations, collaboration and leadership. These are the kind of skills that are going to be required as standard and not optional. And there will be tools that employees rely on to navigate this new workplace and indeed their careers. So for me, today's interview really highlighted how the future of work involves more technology, but it will also play an important role in helping us develop our soft skills. So as humans, we can thrive and survive in a digital age too. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes or drop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, and I'll embed a video of Tailspin in action on the blog post that will accompany this podcast over there so you can visualise the kind of work that they're doing. So please, keep those messages coming in. But it is the end of the podcast now, and and it's time for me to walk off into the sunset. (laughs) Oh, But before I go, I just wanted to say a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.